Customer asked me to finish a Flying V kit for them. Had a little bit of a struggle working on this one, but wanted to share some of my experiences. This was a Flame Maple Veneer. I'm not sure what brand this kit was, but we're gonna start using some Fibings green dye here. I didn't have any green Angelus, so I wanted to use some of the old Fibings dye that I purchased a while ago. And on this kit, it said it was sanding sealer done and grain filled and all ready to go. But as I started working through it, I had sort of two big issues. One was the, the grain filler was not done. And uh, number two was that the finish at the end, automotive finish, uh, had some bubbles in it uh, through a product defect. And I had to sort of sand it over and restart. So. Apologies to Mike for getting this out so long, but still wanted to share the video here. So after applying the green dye, that center line uh, for the veneer join showed a lot of glue, a lot more than I was happy with. So I grabbed the sander and went ahead and started to sand out where the glue was. Hopefully, I was trying to just remove the sections where the glue was showing. So I went with some 320 grit and sanded out that line as best as I could. The glue seeped through on each side so you could see that really hard line. Really frustrated, unhappy with that. So I sanded it off down a little bit more and then went back with the green dye and applied another coat. It looks a lot better than it did, but there is still a line. Uh, which was frustrating. But it was looking pretty good. So then I wanted to do some airbrushing and I got the Angelus black leather dye and airbrushed on the side to get that fade. I didn't want to rub it in. I wanted to spray it. it looks a little bit better. So I've just got an airbrush kit and one of those little mini compressors and I put the black dye in here and just sprayed it around slowly. Just went back and forth to where I thought it looked good. And just turn the body and make sure I'm getting it only where I really want it. Get a nice fade. And then on the back of the neck, what I want to do is apply uh, the Angelus leather dye as well, but this time I sprayed it on. This is where some of the, the heavy amount of frustration I, I really started to see. It said it was grain filled, it was not. And so as I began applying this, I can see some of the pores. It was not as smooth as it needed to be. But I decided to go with it and see if I could build a coat to fill in the grain. So we'll get it all sprayed in nicely. We'll do the same thing on the headstock. So then for the back of the neck and the back of the body, we're going to use this custom shop color. And it's the show me the money green. And we're going to go ahead and apply it and do sort of a, a fade as well. So I don't have the full fading with like a green dye, but I'm using the paint with a black base to sort of give it a, a, a two-color look. And we'll do that on the headstock as well. And you can see I'm spraying across, not into. That way I don't get too much overspray. And then for the back of the body, we're gonna do the same thing. And this is where I thought it was grain filled, it was not. Started using the Angelus leather dye to color the body. And we'll get the green here and do the same thing. We'll spray the sides first.
I'm going to do the top as well. And this was not great around my camera, so I, I sort of learned to stop filming, doing some of this work with my camera, because I'm going to ruin my camera. But again, you can see the fade on the side and the fade on the top. And then once I pulled off the masking tape, some of it, some of the color bled through, and so I grabbed my razor blade and cleaned off the binding. So again, this is just a, a tedious process where I get the binding nice and clean, make sure it looks right. I will do this on the neck, and then we'll do this on the, the back as well on the body, the binding of the body. So the binding of the body has sort of a seven ply, I think it's white, black, white, black, five ply, whatever. And I think that's why I matched the black with the back of the neck, so you get all that coloring to sort of match. Black in the neck, black on the binding. So I'll slowly pull this off on the back as well. If you look closely at the video, you can sort of see right there um, how there was no grain filler, which causes a whole lot of problems. So I went ahead and cleaned this again with a razor blade. Then for the first coat, I used this two-part poly automotive finish, and it looked great. Got it all set up, was ready to go. And then I put on a second coat after the sanding and it bubbled, which was really weird. I, I didn't understand it. So the humidity was really high in Nashville as I was doing this. So I sanded off that first coat, got it all set and done, and then I had to call on the expert to put uh, the second coat on and get it buffed and finished. Life has gotten very complicated for me recently, and so I needed some help getting it finished. So Rodney Reams, with his shop, went ahead and, and put the final coat on and buffed it out. And the guitar looks outstanding, the coloring looks great, the binding, it's all cleaned up nicely. Don't really see the center line too much. Really, really happy with the way the back of the neck turned out. It's a little bit of pain finishing a kit, make sure you, you do the right prep work before you start applying stuff. But thanks for watching guys, we'll see you in the next vid.